my name's Ellie and I am a travel blogger over at thewanderingquin.com and I make YouTube videos from my travels and I have just got to Saudi Arabia and to Riyadh. So this video follows my first 24 hours in the city and in the country. It's been a little bit up and down, up at the start, then it went down a little bit but it came back up today. Um, so I hope you enjoy this very honest video. I wanted to make a really honest video about what it's like to be an independent traveler here. Um, so that you know exactly what it is like or what to expect if you are coming to Riyadh. And so far, I would recommend that you do. So yalla, let's go. So I have just landed in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Had no problems with the e-visa, really easy. I've already came out, changed my money, and now I'm about to get a SIM card. Um, something that I'd heard or read online that is that there wasn't any internet here, um, but there is free Wi-Fi, so that's really easy. The next step was to get a Uber to my hotel. Honestly, getting a SIM card here was easier than most countries. The SIM card activated straight away, which is always helpful, so I managed to order an Uber straight away. hotel and let's just focus on accommodation here in Riyadh to start with so there are no hostels here in Riyadh I don't think there are hostels in Saudi Arabia at the moment it is January 2020 the first of January actually today um, and there's no real budget accommodation either on booking.com I mean most of the hotels even the ones that were higher in price um, were really low ratings like sixes sevens the odd eight um, which is something that I would never normally book um, but I'm actually staying at the Obar Hotel, I think that's what it's called, and it's costing me £60, so a little bit more than I would usually want to spend, and I do think that if you're going to pay less, you are going to get lower quality. But that being said, this was a 7.5, and so far the welcome that I had in the hotel, the room that I've seen, um, deserves more than that, so I think that's worth keeping in mind. In the small Okay, I'm ready to head back out and before you say in the comments I have heard that you don't need to wear an abaya here in Saudi Arabia and I think especially Riyadh as a woman um, however I just felt like it might be more comfortable in one and although it is the law that you don't have to wear an abaya I'm very conscious there is a difference between the law and custom so I am wearing one and I'm actually quite happy to be wearing one so that's fine yes. Cannot say what's wrong or right. No. It's not hard to fool me. No. Cause I'm addicted to the good life. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I have come down to Deera Square because it seems like there's a few things down here, like this square. I think there's a mosque and a fort. Although I plan to get here at sunset, but my half an hour Uber drive took me one hour because I think the taxi driver went the wrong way. Never mind. Deira Square is also known as Chop Chop Square because they do do public executions here. Um, I have read on Wikipedia. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what to do now. Oh, the fort is over here. Let's go and see the fort. I think I had my first experience of things closing um, when the call of prayer happens because the doors were all shut and then there was a few people wondering like why is it shut and then they opened it for us and I think it was because um, people were praying um, so I need to remember that if doors are shut it's probably because people are praying and they will open um, but so far it seems like this fort is free so I'm gonna keep having a little look around and learn something Designs. I just asked if I could go into the Grand Mosque. I know obviously with mosques 
I don't know, I find it confusing like from different mosques I've been around the world, like some mosques women and men are totally allowed to go in and they're kind of obviously aimed at tourists to go in and see them from the inside and then others, especially the inside is just the prayer room which is just for men and I don't know whether women are allowed to go in there out of prayer time um, but anyway luckily there was someone there that helped translate the fact that I just wanted to have a look in um, so they did let me walk around but obviously I couldn't go into the prayer room which was okay. This is the biggest library in Riyadh. It's named uh, Library Al Malik Fahad, King Ooh. Fahad. Okay, thank you. I, I have three, more three times. Thank so you. Thank you so much. So I left that area of the city. I definitely think as a tourist, it's good to see the fort um, and that area. But I'd actually watched YouTube videos that, that said that people in Saudi don't tend to go out until later on. Um, so that's when it's a good time for tourists to go out and kind of like, so it's not completely dead. But actually, I think because it was dark, I just felt like a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so I would actually recommend going there during the day as a tourist. Getting an Uber was a nightmare. I guess it's like, ah, uh, 6.30. So rush hour, so, and there's a lot of traffic. Um, but I did get an Uber and actually I got the nicest driver. Um, he's at university, just working the Uber to earn some money. Um, and he's gonna send me some, uh, yeah, things to do in Riyadh and places to visit. So that was really, really good. I've just come into a mall now because I still haven't got any food. I think there's McDonald's here. Probably gonna end for McDonald's. Sometimes coming to a mall is also the local culture. Today I've just come to the Kingdom Tower to see the view from the top, but I'm in the mall right now. Um, I definitely didn't want to leave this first impressions of Riyadh video on a negative point from yesterday. So we are having another go today. I wanted to give you a real look at what my first kind of 24 hours, I guess, in Riyadh have been like. got to the sky bridge in the kingdom tower and wow i knew that it was high it is 300 meters high and i thought that the view would be epic but honestly <laughs> i had no idea it was going to be this amazing i guess this is the plus to go into places before many other people go to them because you don't get to see the views on instagram but i will show you the views and spoil the surprise i'm afraid because this is epic you need to do this if you come to riyadh very very happy with this view and I also just met the nicest family um, a lady came up to me and asked me if I was a blogger and then I spoke to her dad as well and her family um, I had heard from the YouTube videos that I'd watched about Saudi Arabia that the people here are extremely friendly um, so I feel like already first full day in I've experienced that um, and yes feeling very very lucky and very very happy um, but yeah and just look at this view wow Right now in Riyadh, they are building a metro, which means there are quite a lot of roadworks happening. I basically, <laughs> I'm already excited to come back to Riyadh once this metro is up and working because things are very spread out here. But I did know that before I came here. Um, but yes, I think once the metro is in place, it'll be so much easier for tourists to see the city. Um, the only thing that's a little bit confusing right now is that the metro stations are already on the map. So if you are coming here and you see the metro station on the map, do not think that it's, it is built yet because it's not. I've just come into the National Museum of Riyadh um, and I was supposed to come here yesterday but I kind of ran out of time but I really really wish I had because the people here have been so nice just welcoming me in so I feel like this would have been a, such a better welcome than yesterday. But never mind, it is today. And apparently this museum is huge. It's over two floors. It's got eight halls, lots of history. So let's go and learn something about Saudi Arabia. Well, the National 
National Museum was really, really good. A really good look at Saudi and how everything started. A full geography lesson, but then it also went into the religion of Islam and so, so much. So I definitely recommend going there if you are coming to Riyadh. Um, unfortunately, there is like a really nice park area out there. Um, at the moment, it is Riyadh season, um, so that's closed. It's like a ticketed event only. Um, but maybe other parts of the year it will be open, I'm not too sure. I am actually gonna end this part of the video here because I have been in Riyadh for 24 hours. It's been a little bit up and down, but I feel like I would expect that from somewhere like this where not as many tourists are. Um, and after all, that is the reason that I've come here to see what it is like. But of course, the people here so far that I've met have been so, so nice. From the Uber driver that I had yesterday, which who helped me out, to the people who welcomed me very nicely here and the family that I met on the sky bridge earlier. Um, yeah, I feel very, very welcome here. I'm about to go and meet my couch surfing host now and I feel like that'll give me a different perspective of the city. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Shukran. Shukran.